Hi, welcome, welcome, welcome to Ready, Set, Real Estate. I'm your host, founder, creator, Lisa Gillette, also known as Super Agent. Happy, happy Wednesday. Still happy, I'm happy. Let me finish this note here because I'm just opening escrow on a current transaction. That's one of the pluses you get out of me. I just don't talk to talk. I actually am an active ready, ready set. No, I'm an active real estate broker and I've got a couple negotiations and offers going. And I want to send this message before I get into a whole 40 minute discussion on adjustable rate mortgages. So what I'll do uh, just so that we can get things going, you're not staring at me with my head down. I am going to uh, share our sponsor. Today's sponsor is Real Estate 100, the teen and investment blueprint. Shout out to Anthony, co-author Anthony Lee and myself uh, for putting this gem together. We'll be right back after the sponsor break. All right. Easy peasy. See how easy that was? Wonderful. This is great. This is great. All right. I'm all smiles. Why? Because I'm in here. Michael says, Michael Kalani. Kal nice. Nice. Says, Thanks, Lisa, for doing these teachings. Michael, thank you for the acknowledgement. I'm that much more encouraged that it's not falling on deaf ears. Appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, what else? Announcements, announcements. Let's do announcements, of course, before we jump into the show. Uh, we've got a great topic for today. We're going to just dive into um, ARMS, right? Lower payments, uh, lower payments with uh, adjustable rate mortgages. Why? Because I'm sure we'll all forget about once upon a time when history uh, showed us what happened when we started to mask market adjustable rate mortgages to uh, buyer consumers who likely weren't a good fit. So today we'll talk about who would this product, this loan product be ideal for. Before I jump into that, of course, I want to give some disclaimers. Uh, the information provided on this show should not be considered legal or tax advice. Of course, please seek those legal, reputable, experience, those holding integrity, tax or uh, legal professionals regarding your specific situation. Because I know you've got one. You got a situation. I know we all have one. So please consult those professionals regarding your specifics. Uh, this is for information. Again, I like to say, don't let me lie to you. Don't let Lisa lie to you. Don't, don't let me lie to you. Don't let me lie to you. Don't let me lie to you. I invite you to fact check, of course. When I do present information, I usually am sharing with you the source. I am finding stuff. And I like to go to like .gov sites and HUD and Housing Wire and um, like the uh, NAR or CAR or who else? Who else is a good one? There's some good stuff out there. Good, there's good stuff. There's tons of good stuff. I had, when I do my trainings for real estate professionals, oftentimes I show them where to get this information, how to set up alerts. Cause I have a couple alerts set up and you can do this in Google keywords. Really cool for your respective interests and or industry, even for your own personal professional brand. So I have alerts like on Ready, Set, Real Estate, Lisa Puerto, Lisa Gillette, LA Super Agent, Super Agent, uh, you know, my my local markets. I have alerts. I, I had been following crypto and real estate, so I get those alerts. You can determine how oftentimes you are notified because uh, it can be a lot of information. So I want my news sent to me, my keyword alerts sent to me at midnight. So it hits my inbox at midnight, which is funny. Because I'm usually up at that time and that's kind of like the downtime, except for right now, that's when I'm doing uh, school assignments. <sighs> and of course, those alerts come through and then I'm like, oh, let's see what's happening. Oh, let's. I know I'll get better. at. I'm getting better, getting better. 
less distractions, less distractions. All right. Uh, I was just sharing this this morning. Uh, why I'm all smiles and feeling really great. Why? Because I write down my goals. I write down my real estate goals. I am a business owner. I'm an entrepreneur. And so it is that much more paramount and important for me to write down goals. I invite you to write down your goals. We are third quarter, quarter three, last month and quarter three, strong, feeling great for our office, our team, because we put out the work. Uh, kudos to our clients who are opening escrows and closing escr escrows. Woohoo! So write down your goals, whatever those are, because that is how the universe conspires, conspires to give you, gift you, right? Say, so the, the, the universe conspires for my good. Uh, one of my favorite scriptures is Romans 8, 28, right? All good things work for my good. And so say it how you will, whatever your, your truth is, right? Whatever your truth philosophy is, lean on that, lean on that. For me, I know that the universe conspires for my good and is working for my benefit as long as my benefit does not trespass or hurt or injure others, right? You know, my fellow brethren and sister and in, in humanity and in spirit. So I'm going a long time tangent because probably someone needs to hear it. <laughs> and when I go back and I listen to it, then I'm like, oh, that was really good. That was a great reminder, Lisa. I have to say that because here's what I'm noticing. And I'm going to, let me just jump on this real quick. I'm going to say this. And I'm going to make a note of it here now. Not everyone, don't assume everyone in business operates ethically, right? So don't <laughs> assume ethics is a requirement for all business uh, owners. All right. Oh, and professionals. Uh, I, I'm going to drop this here in a comment because I'm going to I'm going to harp on this for a little bit a little bit here. Shout out, by the way, to those who are streaming on the ERGJ Enterprises channel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your love and support. Of course, to those of you who are tuning in at LA Super Agent on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page, Lisa Gillette, and of course, streaming on Ready, Set, Real Estate. We are also on our radio podcast platforms everywhere. Do catch the replay on your favorite radio podcast. Of course, you can catch us live. So let me do this rant real quick uh, because I, I'm looking forward to working with another professional, agent professional, who we just got to discussing this morning about agents stealing other agents' clients, um, just kind of lost opportunities in referral business. It's getting ugly and it will get uglier. So those of you who are in on the consumer side, meaning you have to deal with these people. You come across it for a snippet, right? Because of you, you're going to do this within the next six months to 12 months, depending how long your search takes, your purchase takes, your sale takes. Um, so depending, however, myself and others, we have to come across and work with these professionals. And one of the things that I want to share as a word of caution, especially as the market adjusts downwards, um, you'll still, you'll see a lot of, you know, push for double ending deals. What does that mean? In the real estate industry, uh, that means that a professional is going to push to want to uh, represent the seller, represent the buyer. And I spoke with one yesterday who's also doing the loan. Nothing legal. It's not illegal to do that. It's not illegal to do that. Where my concern is, is when you are trying to take someone else's client to try to double end, let's say, the listing that you hold. And we oftentimes experience uh, signs of that, signs and symptoms, what to look out for. <laughs> Not, no return phone calls when you send the offer, right? Um, elusive, vague, non-responsive. And you just kind of watch like, hey, I'm submitting offers and that's odd. You just accepted an offer. That's odd. You're back on the market, you know, and and it just seems very strange and odd that your offers don't get acknowledged. 
So there is such a thing called a realtor code of ethics. If you are a realtor and you're paying into the membership of the organization, this trade organization, California Association of Realtors, let's call it Georgia, Pennsylvania, um, local chapters, Philly, AORs, um, national. When you're paying into this, we are required to abide by a code of ethics that we can be... Um, uh, chastised for, right? We can, you can get in trouble and have to go before the board for hearing of the things that you are being called out on. So that's great because then there's kind of like an oversight over the larger part of the industry. Without the trade organization, of course, there's DRE that you can um, submit a request or complaint or an inquiry to the Department of Real Estate for your respective state. Um, it's either Bureau of Real Estate. Uh, let's see. I am, it's the Real Estate Commission, uh, depending again where you are. So with that being said, what we're noticing as the market adjusts downwards, you may say to me, Lisa, why is this happening? Why are agents behaving this way? Well, I'm glad you asked because they are likely now earning less, right? Prices come down. That means less money earned. There is now a bigger push to make up for the lifestyle that they likely have been accustomed to based on higher earnings. So when you don't have similar lifestyle, of course, you see this all the time, right? You guys are watching those uh, greed stories and documentaries about, you know, how people get greedy and wanting to maintain an image, wanting to maintain a lifestyle. Real estate is one of those fields because it's it can afford you a wonderful lifestyle with proper money management, with proper financial planning. However, if you're new or you're not even disciplined and you're not accustomed to it, then what happens is, let me make sure I put my phones on silent. When you're not accustomed to large sums of money and it's lump sums, right? Unless you have some type of structure, which you've put yourself on payroll or you have your LLC paying you and you, you've got your FICA taxes being pulled out of it because there's a lot that goes into this. I have a whole nother training called what no one ever told you before you jumped into real estate. And a couple of things is that for the most part, there's really big five real estate companies nationally every and everybody else is owned by them unless you're independent like myself. And it, it just comes in different colors, schemes, brands and shiny objects and perks. But overall, they're owned by the big five. And yeah, that's kind of the main truth. So. That's one aspect. The other aspect, of course, is fin financial planning, tax planning. I'm speaking from this perspective. Why is because the effects of less earnings, I think, is associated or correlated to the increase of unethical behaviors and practices by those agent professionals when folks are out here just trying to get a home. Truth be told. It's getting ugly. It will get uglier. It will. It will. It will get uglier. We've got 2023. We still have to see the effects of these uh, fiscal monetary policy of uh, interest rate hikes. Not going to see that really kick into gear until 2023 and 2024. By that time, also, we're going to be dealing with the possible re-election of our current president or the new election. So you, it's going to get interesting. It's going to get really, you know, interesting. So, you know, buckle down, buckle down, uh, optimize your expenses, right? Expense optimization. I've been sharing this since the start of the pandemic. Uh, what do you do at a time like this? Listen, and we see it, right? People are not doing disposable, you know, they're not spending uh, as much because they don't have much disposable income. So that's my whole thing. Okay. It's my rant. Okay. So this is goals and whatnot. <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm laughing because I had to, I had to go there. Yes. I had to go there. It had to be said. Okay. And who am I to say it? 
I'm glad you asked. My name's Lisa Gillette, also known as Super Agent, broker, owner of Devenio Estates, of course, serving the Southern California community. Uh, of course, we are independent of Ready Set Real Estate. It's just uh, my business, my background. I am a foreclosure uh, uh, certified, trained, experienced, same with probate, same with short sales, same with standard sales. Uh, also working with the senior community as a senior real estate specialist. And that's a designation, of course, with training and certifications. And of course, I'm constantly doing CEs, aside from the fact that I'm also in school, pursuing my own personal goal, also professional goal, adding um, adding in the future, future real estate attorney to my CV. So stay tuned for that. Your girl is putting in work. I am putting in work. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm glad you asked, who am I? Who am I? And, and what gives you the right to talk about this? Well, I think I've earned that. If you look me up, I've earned a couple accolades, right? My most proud one is I'm the first person in the country to teach real estate uh, to children ages 10 and up. In fact, we just not only teach real estate to children 10 and up, we've designed the curriculum. We me, design the curriculum and program that we do alongside uh, different organizations, nonprofits included. But more importantly, here's what the bigger message is, is. I just created a way to understand real estate. Even a child could understand it. And that's what I bring to the table. That's what I bring to the show is the literacy aspect. Okay, so Ready, Say Real Estate is training, education, real estate literacy, raw, uncut, boom, bust of the real estate side. So yeah, you get to hear all the not so fun side of real estate. Very good. All right. So we're here and guess what? Classroom style. I've got slides for you. <laughs> I've got slides. I love slides. I'm a facilitator. I'm a presenter. I'm an educator. Of course I have slides. I just I just have a slide just for a point of reference. It's not like this whole PowerPoint, like when I go in, but it depends on how involved we are in today's discussion. So uh, I saw an adjustable rate mortgage get pitched to one of my clients recently. And so I felt like it would be a good time to talk about it because that means now it's uh, hitting my backyard per se. Most of my clients end up going with fixed rates uh, prior to interest rates increasing. That was not a thing. There was no need to consider it. We briefly talked about it on one of the past episodes, had a lot of my lender partners come on here and really say, yeah, uh, our arms are back. Let's drop that in the comments below. Arms are back. Arms are back. Arms are back. Are they back with a vengeance? We shall soon find out. Arms are back. Good news, folks. We're on episode 176. Listen, you have been rocking with me for the past 176 episodes. That means collectively, I have been doing this show for five years. Five years. Thank you very much. Uh, we did go dark uh, last year, last period. Was it last year? No, time has just been going. I went dark for a period. I think it was shortly after I got married. Just kind of reset, recharge, see what's going on, see what I want to do. Of course, uh, I missed doing the show. I missed it. And there was so much going on with the moratorium and the pandemic and the halting of foreclosures. So I want to discuss this because two things happened recently. So Arms got pitched to one of my clients who's considering it as a way to get his foot in the door. Of course, because when you say something like a teaser rate, right, teaser rates are those initial interest rates offered as part of adjustable rate mortgages that are really low, you know, 1%, 2%, 3%, anything that's lower than what the going par rate is at a fixed rate mortgage. Right now, I think we're at 5.9 something, 5.875, 5.9, depending on your lender, bank or institution, lending institution, it's somewhere like maybe even a 6.125 floating around the 6%, right? So that's a significant uh, of your borrowing power. That is a significant amount of your borrowing power. 
And so the reason why I also want to talk about it, I'm going to speak about it in the context of what happens when you don't do a couple things like do a refinance for a uh, rate and terms, meaning getting out of that adjustable rate mortgage and then going into a fixed rate mortgage product. We're going to talk about that. And then we're going to talk about when you assume that interest rates are going to remain low for the life of that loan. If you don't swap out of it as a strategic plan. And then I will share with you the only, I'm sure there's more, but the only success story I know personally with a just adjustable rate mortgages, I will share with you in the end. Please remind me, because every time I say in the end, I go on and I on and then I, I'm forgetting the goodies. So hold me to it. Hold me to it. Share the, share the successes in the end, right? All right. So let's, uh, of course, you can screenshot here. If you do want to specifically, I think this is a great, great uh, file and link. So I got this from the Consumer uh, Finance Agency. And if you recall, uh, CFPB uh, also was created during the Obama administration as a result of the havoc arms wreaked on the nation. I'm going to drop that link right here in the chat for you as well. It may or may work depending where you're streaming from. It might be clickable. It might not. Either way, either way, either way, you can send me an email, of course, send an email or text me and say, you know, send that arm, arm ebook or brochure, send that arm brochure so that I can read up on it. Because this arms are a great strategy for those who are on top of uh, their finances. Great strategy. They were very popular, have been very popular for investors as well to get in using an arm because their plan is not to keep the loan for the duration of holding that property. It's, I need a mortgage. I need a low interest rate. My payments are low, principal and interest. I pay taxes, insurance out separate of that. Again, those are types of strategies that individuals use to leverage low interest rates associated with the ARM loan product. Are you with me? I'm going to take a pause there. Are you with me? Just checking in. All right. I feel like I'm going to be, um, I might be a little, this this might be a little extensive because there's, there's a lot of meat that goes into this. So I'm going to grab some water, take this notes. Give me a quick second. I'm going to jump over here and restock on water. All right. Okay. So we'll be talking about adjustable rate mortgages. The good news is I have it right here on the screen for you so that you can either screenshot it if it's helpful and, uh, for future notes. So follow along. What are, so, so you have two types of different mortgages. You've got the fixed rate mortgage where your interest rate is fixed for the life of the loan. The rate is fixed for the life of the loan. I am going to clarify the misconception that your mortgage payment stays fixed for the life of the loan. That is not true. I'm talking about fixed rates right now. That is not true. Let me come back. I, as it relates to fixed interest rates, it is a misconception to think that your mortgage payment stays fixed for 30 years, 20 years, 15 years, 10 years. It is a misconception, let me say for the people in the back, that on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage, you, that your mortgage payment is fixed. It's not true. Your rate is fixed. Your payment is not. What affects the increase or changes? I would say the, the changes in your mortgage payment, property taxes and property insurance, property taxes, property insurance. Mm-hmm. Okay. Adjustable rate mortgages 
as it relates to our discussion now, change periodically and they change in relation to the index, market index. I want to bring up another document. I might not have enough time to take out all the personal information, but as we discuss this, and this is, again, I'm having this discussion because I'm having this discussion <laughs> because as we shift into a rising interest rate environment, those of you who are still holding on to, to these adjustable rate mortgages means you've been receiving notices that your rate is going up, right? Your rate is changing. And when your rate changes, what happens to your payment? If your rate, your interest rate goes up, what happens to your mortgage payment? Principal and interest goes up. Excuse me. Do you see this error right here? I put assume more risk in the long rum. <laughs> I don't drink, but <laughs> long rum, that's a typo. Anyway, so yes, the reason why I bring that up is because people were wondering, and I've been hearing these discussions about, well, we're in an environment where people have equities in their property, so there won't be anyone you know, being impacted by foreclosures and short sales. Well, if you've been tuning in and keeping up to these last episodes, you've been finding out where our short sales are going to come from, right? Right? Where are they going to come from? Hmm. Hmm. Pace and lean. Pace leans and hero leans, right? <laughs> Solar panels. They're going to come from that. They're going to come from that. Also, if you've been wondering where foreclosures are also going to come from, they're going to come from those who have been impacted post pandemic after now, guess what? The moratorium has expired. It ended December 31st on mortgages, home loans, and car contracts. I actually was reading the civil code in depth yesterday because I was reading the notice, the notice of default from a particular client owner, property owner, who is past due. And I just, you know, my husband and I were like, you know, what, what are those civil codes? What those, what do those mean? So I went back, we looked at the civil codes and I learned that apparently also car contracts were on moratoriums as well. I did not know. I didn't know. So that's great to know. However, that's ended. They said, hey, we've given you time to work out the forbearance, the loan modification. We've given you time for COVID hardship. The time starts now to move forward. That's going to be the theme right now as you hear moving forward, at least from kind of a political agenda, the socioeconomic agenda of how do we now move forward after COVID? I'm saying that also in the context that LA County has recently voted to end the COVID protections for tenants. It will end this year. They are deciding, declaring, they will not be offering extensions. However, you, you should know that LA County is separate from city of LA. LA has no end date, All right? Whole nother conversation. So you got to really work. If you're a landlord, you've got to really be on top of those rules. Definitely work with an experienced attorney who is staying on top of it. I know a lot of the eviction companies, um, a lot of them just kind of step back from this whole thing because tenants have had tons of protections and it was it's more strife and costly to even try to push the issue on eviction with all these, all the rules, right? There's just so many rules. So get work with someone that ex is experienced for your specific situation as it relates to that. Okay, let's continue on, on adjustable rate mortgages. Uh, the arms have interest rates to change per periodically in relation to the index. And the initial rate is lower, right? The teaser rate is usually what it's called, it's lower for the first year, and they have different types of arms, right? You've got the 10-1 arm, 
uh, you know, five, one, three, one. And so it's, you know, 10 years, the interest rate, that initial interest rate is fixed for the first 10 years. Then it adjusts every year after that, according to what the market index is doing. They also have their formula of how many basis points they are going to add to the index. And then they kind of do an average out not to exceed X amount interest rate. The last one that I saw, the last one, so now understand this, with the adjustable rate mortgage, you can have an initial rate of 4%, for example, and that it says when it adjusts or changes, it is not to exceed 10%. So your initial is 4% interest, amortize over 30 years, fix for a set period that could be five years, 10 years, three years, uh, sit, fix for a set period, and then it adjusts every year after that. What I've seen is people use it to leverage, to get their foot in the door. Again, we're discussing this is because this is a way to get a lower payment. The question is, who is it ideal for, right? So it could be be less expensive than a fixed mortgage over time if and only if rates remain steady or decrease over time. So if you've been enjoying having an adjustable rate mortgage from 2006 and rates have been where they are, I think your mortgage payment had been like $400 or $500 uh, for the last couple years. And then it was like 800, 600. So that's unheard of, right? And pretty nice because you're like, oh, my mortgage is 500 bucks. But be strategic about that because when rates increase, that means your mortgage payment increases as well. And so now you're kind of on this, you know, high and low. As it relates to who's an ideal fit for this, when I say high and low, whose incomes, let's think about this together, whose income fluctuates throughout the year that would likely be able to make a, a lower payment at some point of the year. And then when money is, you know, they're in a, a high income season, earning season, then they could make a little bit more towards the mortgage. Who does that sound like? Give you a second to think about it because there are particular industries that would be a good fit for adjustable rate mortgages that their seasonal income is low during a se one season and high during the next, which allows them to do what is called pick a payment. Pick a payment. You ever heard that term? The pick a payment mortgage. They're allowed to pick a payment. The way the pick a payment looks like is you get four to five options. Let me, let me just think about this. Uh, so four op so options looks like this. So option one is principal is interest only. Option two is principal and entrance. You're making, see how nice I am I'm making notes for you. I'm doing all the work for you. Principal and interest. Option three is principal is partial principal and interest. And the fourth one is full uh, principal interest taxes. Gonna take me a while to do that just so I can get those notes in there for you. Okay, so what does the pick a payment look like? You get a statement and it basically says, you know, you have a couple options to make uh, to send in payment and they'll give you different payment options like a payment plan. But they do give you a disclaimer and say, hey, if you only pick the interest only option, you are experience, you're going to experience what is called a negative amortization, amortization, negative amortization. Negative doesn't sound good, correct? Exactly. What that means is your 
loan balance is going to be growing instead of decreasing. It will be increasing over time if you pick option one, which is the interest only option, um, because you're not hitting the principal loan amount. You're only paying on the interest. Then they say you've got the second op option for principal and interest. You can make the payment towards the principal and interest. Then you have a third option of the partial principal and interest taxes and insurance. And then you have the fourth option, which is the full principal interest taxes insurance, which is going to be the higher amount because that is what the regular kind of standard forward fixed mortgage looks like when you are paying towards everything in terms of the housing expense principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. When you only lean on interest only, which you go, oh, four or 500 bucks, 600 bucks, this is a good deal, no sweat. But what happens is you, again, you have your loan balance increasing over time if you do that for a long enough period. I remember back in the day when I was getting those phone calls and people were like, hey, I keep getting solicited about my mortgages, my mortgage balance is growing. Yeah, that was the thing if you didn't really understand what an adjustable rate mortgage is. There's a lot more education now. There's a lot more font six, you know, font 20, you know, large font so that you as a borrower understands what you are signing up for when it relates to adjustable rate mortgages because there is high risk involved. There's high risk of you defaulting in the future if interest rates increase. There's high risk in the future that much more, of course, if your income changes. Any slight change to your income will affect your ability to do, you know, option one, two, three, or four as it relates to making towards uh, making mortgage payments. Okay. Um, assuming more risk in the long run. So let's talk about uh, some of the things you should be asking yourself in terms of who is the ideal candidate for this. One of the things you should be asking is, do I make enough income and is my income likely to increase in the future? Let's, let's talk about that. Who is the ideal candidate for an R? All right. Who is an ideal candidate for an arm? Of course, if you do loans, I invite you. And if you've been selling loan products, I invite you to share, share your stories and or tips by all means. We welcome uh, professional feedback, respectful feedback. The good news is I don't have a position one way or the other. I do have a position that I do think there is an ideal uh, candidate. I do think, I do see, and you could just look at it based on my professional experience, when these products are pitched to people who are not clear on uh, what type of mortgage product they have signed up for, it uh, becomes that much more um, uh, at risk of default because it oftentimes is attached with balloons. And, you know, I had one client call me and say, you know, I've been making my payment. I've been sending the thousand dollars and they no longer, the bank will no longer accept my thousand dollars. And I said, well, let's look at your mortgage statement. When I looked at the mortgage statement, it read that the, the balance was now due in full because she had a balloon payment. So understanding as well, are, is there a balloon attached to it? Um, it's it, There's just so much, <laughs> there's so much that goes into this stuff. So yes, uh, it's important for you to ah, do your research, ask the questions. This is why we're having this discussion because it's back. Arms are back. Remember, that's how we started it. So ideal candidate, will you be taking on other large debts? Um, loans for school, car loans in the near future. How long do you plan to own this property? If interest rates rise, 
if interest rates rise and you are not eligible for refinancing because you no longer uh, can afford the mortgage, are you prepared with the reality of having to sell? Of course, we discussed alternatives to that, loan modifications. Currently, those of you who are experiencing this, uh, those of you who have family and friends that are experiencing this, and unfortunately, the reality is when people are going through hardships, especially with their mortgage and anything housing related or job related, they don't share, they don't tell. So in that case, of course, I've got to invite you as a quick reminder, the cost for all this real estate game is pressing one, let, letting me know you're here and pressing two, Let's me know you shared it. Share, sharing is caring. And be sure to subscribe. That way you get notified for all our latest episodes. As we continue to discuss the topics that is affecting our nation as it relates to real estate. Okay, let's continue. The reality is when someone is facing this hardship, again, kudos, kudos to a past client who stayed in touch with me, text me, hey, got a friend, uh, he's missed three months, you know, it's it's pretty serious. Can you call him? I told him about you, he's expecting your call, da, da, da. right? The whole thing goes down pretty quickly. I'm pretty responsive when it comes to the, that type of scenario. So people who get bumped in terms of my priority is when there's a death of a borrower or a property owner and or when the property is facing a notice of default, which is in California, a non-judicial proceeding for foreclosure, meaning they do not have to take you to court. They being the lender, the bank or the institution, the holder of the note or uh, deed of trust does not have to take you to court in order to proceed with foreclosing on you as it relates to mortgages, different from tax or share of sales, okay? Separate from that, whole nother show, another whole nother conversation. As it relates to mortgages, you are signing paperwork in that mortgage that says you pretty much are waiving your rights to a judicial process. And if in the event you default, that the collateral, the house, the real property, commonly known as the address, um, will be, can be, and will be used uh, to recover the defaulted amount, i.e. by way or of a sale in an auction, in a public auction that would happen after they have done their legal process and due diligence. Your past due, three months, 90 days past due, they will file a notice of default that's public record, which means everybody knows your business anyway, at least anyone who's shopping for a deal and looking to buy your house for what you owe on it, what you owe, not usually market value, what you owe on it, looking for a deal is going to inundate you with phone calls, letters. They will come to the door and they will say, hey, I've got a cash deal. You can walk away now. It works for some. It doesn't for others. And it's the, uh, the others that I'm concerned about who are the unfortunate waiting to the last minute, the 11th hour when time is up and there's nothing else that can be done. At least if you find yourself in that scenario where you're facing foreclosure with no alternative option in retention, in property retention, then at least negotiate selling your property with a professional that will negotiate best price in terms, usually giving you extra time to live in the property so that you can find a replacement home, right? You'll sell it, You'll do a lease back period, 30, 60, 90 days, depending what's comfortable. Of course, the, again, have it professionally negotiated and structured to your benefit. And that way you're not on someone else's clock, right? It goes to auction, it gets sold. And then they go through the process of then filing an eviction because you then don't have protections unless you're a tenant. You don't have protections in terms of being evicted out of that property. I know that's a lot. This is a lot. It's a lot to take in. But as we're discussing the nature of arms and having a great lending team, kudos to my lender partners that stay in touch with their clients. If you know you're selling an adjustable rate uh, mortgage, 
then it is also, I think, your responsibility to make sure that client is good as well, right? Making sure that, hey, you give them that gentle reminder and say, your mortgage, you know, your rate is coming up uh, due to change. Let's kind of look at some other options. Let's look at getting you into a fixed rate mortgage. How's your income? How's the job situation? How's the work situation? How's the business, right? Did you incur more loans and debt? These types of things affect you, right? Uh, the other question is, if you take on the adjustable rate mortgage, do you pay? Do you plan to pay it off early, making payments on time or paying more? This leads me to my successful story. My successful story is my grandmother. My grandmother, why initially? My grandmother uh, successfully was able to pay off her mortgage on an adjustable rate. Ideal candidate, why her income fluctuated depending on her work periods, right? Depending on how she worked. She'd be on a contract or a job and she'd have work for X amount of months. And she would earn this amount. And then, you know, next period, she'd earn a different amount. Depends on what, you know, what the position was at play. She's been very fortunate and blessed. And hey, grandma, if you're watching, hi, I love you. <laughs> uh, you know, grandma watches the show sometimes. She's like, oh, I saw guess who came up on Facebook. You, I watched your show. Yeah, so cool. <laughs> so I get to shout her out and discuss that. You know, one thing that I hear her say is I kind of, I was sharing with her the other day and I've shared with you all candidly when the, when the crisis hit and financial crisis and meltdown hit, I was susceptible to the impacts of the market as well. And so had, you know, credit card debt, collections, judgments, liens, all that fun stuff that I've built myself out of. And I was sharing that with my grandmother and I said, you know, I finally and finally like clear, like, woo, took care of that. And I just love that my grandmother coming from, she's not native to this country. She's not native to the United States. Uh, she's from Belize, Central America is where my family's from, which by the way, I just received my dual citizenship. Woohoo! Yes. Doing the thing, doing the thing. Cause I got plans. I've got goals. I've got goals, got real estate goals. So given that she comes from a, a different place, one thing that I can attribute to my grandmother is how sharp, she is when it comes to uh, credit and paying things on time. When you talk about someone who was born in the 40s and financial education in a third world country is not the is not the thing. Still, it's still it's just probably getting there. Right. They're just, you know, snippets of information of banking right now. Right. Like banking and, you know, you know, how, when you take a loan out, paying it back and that sort of thing. So considering this is someone who was born out of the 1940s, and of course we can talk about all the, you know, eras of depression, recession, and what comes with that. And to say as a success, that was the, that was the product she was sold when she purchased her first property here in the United States, first time home buyer. And, uh, you know, her, and my mom, and one of the things in purchasing that product was understanding that even though the interest rate would decrease and the mortgage was low and I, I, she showed me, you know, she showed me one time and she's like, look, my mortgage is, you know, $432 it was like 400 and 500. And she's like, even though it's four or $500 because rates had dropped, she said, I still send a thousand dollars every month. And alas, she succeeded in paying that mortgage. So was she an ideal candidate? Yes, because she had the good habits to pay more, pay above the more, what the mortgage called for. And her income did fluctuate through her career, her working career and her earning days, right? Her earning uh, potential fluctuated. So ideal. Was she someone that took on more debt? No, she was not. Till this day, she does not take on debt. She's like, I don't like debt. She borrows money, $5,000 recently. And she's like, I paid it off already. <laughs> 
So yeah, banks and lending institutions are not going to make too much money off of her when it comes to uh, interest, right? Because she wants to make sure she pays that. So I wanted to share that success story. Again, we discussed pros and cons, uh, ideal candidates. And if, again, if you would like, if you would like the information to this brochure here that I got from finance.gov, uh, drop the link. I checked the link down, uh, excuse me, I dropped the link down below. You are welcome to use it. If it doesn't work, let me know, send me an email. Again, thank you, thank you. I felt like it was timely because we are watching, I'm not going to say arms are back with a vengeance, but we are watching a shift back into a very familiar territory, uh, one which we had climbed out of during the financial housing crisis. And I know the reality is people have short term memory. We sometimes forget how we got where we got and why we are where we are now. So this is my loving reminder to make sure you are doing your due diligence, asking the questions, researching, and getting educated. Get the information, get the information so you can make an informed decision, an intelligent informed decision. Because regardless of your level of education, one thing that we all do know and have to deal with is money. That's the reality, is money. All right. With that, I say have a productive a week. We'll see you next week on another information-packed episode on Ready, Set, Real Estate. Bye! <laughs>